in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Okay, there are giants here, but you, for this tribe, this is your own portion. What you will do with the giants to, 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 to you know, are, are we together now? It is up to you to go back to him again and say, God, you are the one who gave me. You were aware that there were giants. What should I do now with these giants? Most people are aware of the instruction, I mean, the, the provision, and then we start running. And you get there and find the giant and say, come, we are waiting for you. And we stand there to say, God, this is unfair. How do you send me to a land flowing with milk and honey, with the anakims there? These were beasts with six fingers and six toes. Joshua and Caleb said, let us go up as once. We are well able. The same God who gives you, the, who tells you about what to do, can empower you to walk in that instruction. Hallelujah. Something you are yet to do is why you are where you are something you are yet to do is why you are where you are please find a way of believing that i'm not playing games with you something you are yet to do is why you are where you are for some of you the something that is left is for you to sing praises and roll before god before the miracle happens for some of you, the something that is left for you to do is to thank God for what he has done so far while trusting him for the one he's yet to do. Something you are yet to do, for some of you, you need to take a seed by faith and with understanding and engage it and say the seed bruises the head of the serpent. There is something you are yet to do. For some of you, you are yet to study to show yourself approved. For some of you, you are yet to contend for higher levels of impartation. But by all means, ladies and gentlemen, settle it and know this for a fact, that something you are yet to do is why you are where you are. This is something I had to tell myself and to take responsibility by the Spirit. Is God helping someone? And is God challenging someone? What is number three? So number one, the knowledge of the promises, the spiritual blessings. Number two, the knowledge of the conditions that commit God on your behalf. Are you ready for number three? Number three, the faith to engage the promises so that they deliver. The faith to engage the promises so that they deliver. The faith to engage the promises so that they deliver. The faith to engage the promises so that they be deliver. Isaiah 1 19. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 19. If ye be willing, look at this disturbing scripture. He never said, Go and eat the good of the land. It says, if ye be willing and obedient, that is one word that describes faith. If ye be willing and obedient, it says, ye shall eat the good of the land. Every land has good, but whether the portion will come to you or not depends on your willingness and your obedience. Faith to engage the promises so that they deliver. We consider Job 36 and verse 11, remember, if they obey and serve him, that is the condition connected to spending your years in prosperity, your days in pleasure, if they obey and serve him. Hallelujah. If I bring a package here, maybe some meal in a leather 
and I said the condition to receive it here is by 1220 on the dot you run and come up stage here and pick it up the first thing you need is the knowledge that this is even aware that you the, the awareness that this is even there am I right then number two the knowledge of the conditions but you can know the condition and still sit down there and yet not get it out of this crowd the first person who will run in this example now assuming I'm holding it and once it is 12 20 somebody will be discussing the condition I know I am telling you you just go around in fact there is a stairway you climb up and while he's discussing somebody from nowhere will run and come and pick it up and then you say it's not fair I know the blessing I know the conditions but you did not work in keeping I will only release it to the one who actually gets here physically not the one who talks about getting here are we together write this down please obedience to God's word is the only way to commit God's integrity to perform I'll take it again obedience to God's word is the only way please if you're writing on the line only way obedience to God's word is the only way to commit God's integrity to perform you want to see God's power, His grace, His word manifest in your life, it will be at the instance of obedience. There's a statement that I wrote down here and I think it's important that we get. No amount of sacrifice will substitute for the place of obedience. No amount of sacrifice will substitute for the place of obedience. No amount of sacrifice will substitute for the place of obedience. Hallelujah. Till today, every time I have the opportunity to fellowship with the Lord and study scripture and in the place of prayer, I am asking him, Lord, what is the next level of my life? What is the next level of ministry? The moment he tells me, the next thing I ask him, thank him for that one, and I say, Lord, what is the role I have to play? This is responsible Christianity. What is the role that I have to play? And God will say, your own role is to make sure, for instance, serve the people with truth. Wake up and learn and study. I will not bring people to you and you will teach them nonsense and waste their time. I love you, but I love them too. You see that? So for as long as I obtain grace and I'm studying, I am partnering with God. You see, your faith is your partnership with God to make his promises good in your life. Obedience is your partnership with God to make his promises good in your life. There is nothing God cannot do. The only challenge is most believers are in ignorance, ignorance of his promises. They think God lied when he said it is finished. Or number two, ignorance of the conditions desired or required to engage those promises and then the grace and the faith to take actual steps. God can speak to you for instance you can be praying and say Lord what is the key to the next level of my life and God can tell you the key to the next level of your life is to open a business in the mainland and in the island that can be God's instruction and while he's saying it you may not have one naira to know that God has said this you go and now get scriptures everywhere the sole of your feet treads upon you see you have now positioned yourself with scriptures. Lord, what is the condition? How is this going to come? And you journey through scripture. How did people who have nothing, how did resources enter their hands? You go to look at Egypt. Egypt was broke for 430 years and in one day abundance entered their hand. How did that happen? What makes an empty hand to have plenty? Exodus 3.21 
and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go ye shall not go empty now you know your next prayer point hallelujah yes and then you know that relationships are the greatest platform for transferring anything from one person to the other and then you begin to pray lord this destiny help us in the name of jesus i am valuable but the person to identify my value and to honor me like the wine presser begin to bring them to my life this is intelligent and responsible christianity and then you take a step of faith you come around the mainland and at least try to identify a store you go to the island you identify a store and you say lord i have found a place i cannot take any step but just to let you know that i believe you enough you will marvel and wonder at the miracle that will happen somebody will get up and say i was sleeping yesterday and the lord gave me an instruction that you are about to do a project he said i should stop when you come to testify in church people look at you as if you are just stage managing it but the truth is that those who know how to walk by faith never are never bankrupt of testimonies we can spend all day and all night here and i will tell you miraculous things that god has done in my life and in the life of several people who have dared to believe him god is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent God is showing someone in this conference the missing link that it is not as if God is unfaithful or unrighteous. No, no. It is that we have not understood the way we convert spiritual blessings. Forever I remain aware, you see that, that everything I desire to happen in my life is already finished in Christ. If it is not finished in Christ, there is no basis for asking for it. Because the only platform for your asking, especially for the New Testament believer, is Christ alongside that which he has done. There is nothing you cannot. There's no mountain. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. You're not a man to stop doing Hallelujah. You believe this? That right where you are, it is in your prophetic destiny for God to give you a global visibility to lift you and take you to the nations but you have to believe that 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 reality is true in Christ forget about your current situation everybody started from somewhere yours is to believe him when you do the next thing is to find out what are the conditions connected what are the conditions connected hallelujah this is what I believed about myself even when I was in one room when I read in scripture that I'll be exalted above all the nations of the earth I believed him I really did I believed him and I was not ashamed of my growth and my transition I made up my mind that I believe him because God is not a man I remember many many years ago I was sitting somewhere in Zaria. I had never entered a plane in my life. And I saw a plane passing. And I remember the Lord speaking to me. And said, many people enter the plane for many reasons. But my word will put you in that plane. It's true. This is not about flying. It's about what God can do. There is someone you are sitting down right now locked up with prophecies. God has told your parents they will not die till they see God lift you. And you are, you, are, you are interrupting what God has said because you have refused to believe him. There is a man of God here. God is telling you that this domain called Lagos, don't say there are plenty churches. It's none of your business. Yours is what God has said that he's doing with you. Hallelujah. I believe God. I do. I do. When I found the key, I began to practice responsible Christianity. God, you would do it. That's wonderful. But that is just consolation. 
believe me hallelujah the Lord told me something that he told Joshua I remember three or four years ago I was preparing for my birthday and the Lord the word of the Lord came to me and he said I will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side when he said that I believed him that today I will begin to magnify you before the nations when he said that I first received it and I prayed and I said Lord you are able to lift show me what I need to do not oh God thank you I know you will do it and then you go around bragging and say I know what God told me and your life will be left in shame and disappointment and people will say this noise you have made now and you will misrepresent God through pride in ignorance most people have brought reproach to themselves and to the name of the Lord they come out and they shout God said this it's true he said it but if you do not know the conditions and you do not engage it by faith you will marvel and wonder at the kind of disappointment that trails your life. Hallelujah. This man standing before you by the privilege of God's grace. I have seen the hand of God. I have stood before kings. I have stood before heads of states. I have stood before nobles like God said. I don't say it to brag. I'm inspiring someone. God is too serious to play with you. God is too serious to be joking and playing games. It's just that most of us do not know that when God speaks, he really means what he's saying. Hallelujah. The performance is only for them that believe and act in faith. Them that believe and act in faith. Them that believe and act in faith. There are many people today trusting God for financial resources for many things. And if you tell them, let me show you the pathway, they will say, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, a serious person. And, and yet the result is not there. You see, let me tell you, if the result is not there, just humble yourself and learn. Humility does not kill. Our world is full of a lot of arrogance in the midst of ignorance. One thing you cannot disprove is results. Hallelujah. You may have heard my testimony. One time I was talking to a man and, you know, the man was in a serious situation economically and I was trying to lovingly just share with him to say, Sir, would you consider approaching it this way, this way, this is what the word of God says. And the man said, no. He said, do you know what it means to take care of two children? And I looked at him with compassion in my heart. He said, this man will kill himself for nothing and blame God. See, the person who is in a hole and someone who is outside watching is in a hole and he's not agreeing that I'm in a hole and you're saying, I can help you out. This is the state of many believers. I hope and I pray that those that are here seated are not part of those people. That when you hear his voice, you know. For someone as you are hearing me, that prophet in you is saying, this is the key. It's time to manifest that glory and that grace that apostolic grace, that sign and wonder that God has ordained you to be, that kingdom financier, that captain of industry, it is true that his light can come and it can shine in darkness. It's up to you to argue it, explain it away, or believe it with childlike faith and watch the God of wonder arise and surprise you. As for me, I've made up my mind that this word must work in my life. And I'm about to prove to a generation by the Spirit that God is not a liar. It may take time, but yours is to press in truth and watch the God of heaven surprise you in ways that you cannot imagine. I do not know any man who has been lifted by God who has ignored the knowledge of the promises of God. I do not know any man who has been lifted by God who has ignored understanding the conditions connected to divine promises to make them true in his life. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I sincerely sympathize with your pain and any setback you may be having in your life, but I submit to you by the authority of scripture. Wishing and attracting sympathy will only comfort you sociologically, but will not change that situation. One day it will better is a mediocre consolation. It will not work that way. 
the secret to change is engaging light for as long as you keep discussing darkness this room is dark i think we'll do something about it darkness remains there the one the one who does not even talk and yet is fixing a bulb and making sure he puts it on is the one who will have that room lit neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel but upon a lamp stand so that it will give light to everybody in that place you can engage light in every aspect of your life the word of god is full of testimonies of men and women who engage this light god spoke to them they believed him they found out the conditions attached they engaged it with understanding can i tell you when you see a man who is determined to follow this protocol of engaging the light no matter what is not working in their lives i am telling you you just keep watching you will watch with your own eyes the way they begin to triumph in experience from one level of victory to the other our fathers have taught us this they have demonstrated it with their own lives hallelujah praise the name of the lord i remember i was one of on one of my trips i had the privilege to go to one of the redeemed campgrounds and when I saw the vast campground that they bought, I said, my God, this scripture that wherever the sole of your feet treads upon, that thing is true. Whether it works for you or not is not an issue. You see, while you are there blaming God, there are people saying, thank you, Jesus, because the word is working. Are we together? Yes. If you buy a bottle of coca-cola or any of this drink and you try to use your teeth to open it and it's hurting you you'll be blaming the company you were not supposed to use your teeth to open it just because you don't know how you see that you can hurt your teeth even break your teeth and you are angry what wicked people how can they make this this uh, this top so hard like this and you try and try and try you see if someone watches you he will hate that company because you say how can they be so wicked to package such a nice product that way and then you will see a little boy come with something called an opener am i right on that and just push it and then it's up and you stand there it's up to you to argue well it's just an exemption or to learn a lesson and say next time your teeth was not meant to be that it worked once does not mean that's the way it works god just showed you mercy and your teeth opened it once one day you will try it and it's blood that will come out you see that but for the person who has an opener you are not afraid of how many bottles you have to open because the opener does not get tired the opener does not feel pain. This is how certain people have laid hold on eternal life. They have mastered the art of working with God. No matter what instruction he gives them, they know the formula already. Believe his promises, believe the conditions, engage by faith, leave the rest to God. Just saying, God, you said it and I believe it honestly. I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but it does not settle it. It is what he said that you believe you understand what he has said and the conditions to engage it then you obtain grace from god and walk in keeping obediently fulfilling the conditions that engage god now you can go to bed and watch the god of heaven arise for you apply this to any area of your life and watch this god visit you and surprise you this is what we have done with our lives with childlike faith and have continued to transit from one level of grace to the glory of God and it is only the beginning of greater things to come with this childlike faith we have seen the sick healed with this childlike faith we have seen nations change I told you about years ago when God gave me an instruction and said in the future ministries will no longer have to sell CDs and the rest I was in the place of prayer and he said, because technology will, will grant access, a time will come when teachings and messages, information will literally be free online. This was many years ago. And he said, take your audios, put it online, and my angel will take it to the nations. This is how I will announce you. He was telling me that in one room, and with childlike faith, not knowing what the future looks like, seeing it today the other side of obedience look like you were just lucky there is no luck in it hallelujah 
and by that one instruction I don't know what would have happened to my life if I did not obey you see obedience to God's instruction does not carry the same value all the time there are certain instructions if you obey 20 years of your life is what will or disobey 20 years of your life is what will go for that disobedience believe me when I tell you hallelujah there are instructions that God is already giving me now for the future. And for me, my own is just to pray and say, Lord, grant me the grace. The grace to obey you to the latter. The grace to obey you to the latter. It's the same thing when God moved us to Abuja. Getting there to say, Lord, you are the one who has brought us. What do you need to do? Do this, do that. You've heard my story. God gave me an instruction buy the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, and the map of the world and pray on it. That's it. Every night, with childlike faith, you come and see me looking like a herbalist. Father, in the name of Jesus, you spoke and I believe. If you are full of yourself, you will never obey God. You, will, you need to become a child because there are times God will say, drop your CV in your house, on the ground. Lock your door and dance. Lord, I cannot dance. That's the priest. To God, you are dancing. You are, are, not, you are not recording yourself to put on YouTube. So, I mean, who, who cares? And you dance like a fool. And in the midst of that, God will say, you did this to obey me. I will see to it that you never have to cry again. And you will see doors open. Hallelujah. I remember when we got there, I was I'd sent a few people to go and look for a place for us because with the visions that I saw, I said, which auditorium now would be able to contain this size of people in Abuja? Abuja has always been home, but where will you find, except you build it by yourself, but I do not know any rented facility that will be able to do that. And where would it be, in fact? I, will, I remember we had sent, we saw a place that they, they, you know, they called my attention to, but the amount... You will need to, that's when you will know whether you, you are really, whether you are just talking all this thing or you love God. And you know, members are wonderful people. May God help you. Your faith will work and we are backing you up in prayer. But you are, the, finally, you are the one who, who flogs it out until a miracle manifests. I think I was in Enugu when, when they had met the man initially. He said, no, 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 no. Pastors and churches destroy facilities and I'm not ready. I said, leave him. Just leave. We know what to do was in Enugu, true story the man was sleeping and when he said he had the voice of God and the Lord told him, he said this people is a move, is a prophetic move and the guy got up, I went to go and greet him, I was not even going to discuss the issue of the venue, just to go and greet him and say I'm meeting you for the first time there and there he called all the managers we sat down and we discussed the rest to God be the glory <laughs> hallelujah do you believe what I'm telling you? Yes, sir. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of giving to the world. Whatever he tells you, he will make out of you. Please believe him. If God tells you you will stand before presidents and kings and nations, do not look at your lowly estate. Believe him. Believe him. Are we together? Yes, sir. Believe him. Even if you don't believe him, ask him to help your own belief. It's more sincere than disobedience. It's better to say, Lord, I don't know if I have the faith to believe you. Many years ago, God granted me an instruction. He gave me an instruction and he said, one day I will send you. You've heard the story. And I would, he sent me and I went, I remember then to Canaan land. And it was an instruction with a seed, the kind of seed that you know that you are really obeying God. And I got up and went there. When I did what I had to do, 
the Lord asked me to place my hand on the ground there. And he said, son, from today, you have entered the overflow anointing. Right now, God brought you here. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen to me. We're about to pray. Get tired of your current situation and tell yourself no more excuses not after this conference god you are real i'm not going to sit down and allow my life to keep mocking and misrepresenting you you are the god of all grace you are the god of all flesh there are things that you have told me and i know that you do not lie there are things that you have told me and i know that you do not lie there are things that you have told me and I know that you do not lie. You told me in my lifetime I will see my children become great. Lord, I'm ready to see it. Anna the prophetess was in the temple and God told her she would not die until she sees Jesus. She remained there until Jesus appeared. When he said, she said ah, finally I've seen the consolation. Blessed is she that believes for unto her there shall be a performance. I remember when New Heritage Baptist Church was in the old building. I had the privilege of seeing the faith walk that brought this church here. Faith, believing God and taking one step to the other. There is nobody who comes from nowhere. It's a lie. Just because you are not aware when they were transiting does not mean they did not transit. Every king, if it's David, he came from a bush obedience transited him until he sat on the throne your throne is there waiting for you for some of you it's been there for a long time and God is saying when will you sit there as a king and a priest that you are there is a praise that your life should bring dear prophet of the living God when will you obey God to lift you so you start speaking his counsel to the nations dear man of God do you not know I was teaching our people that there are many destinies connected to your loins if you do not obey God to manifest you are not the only one who will suffer all the people who have been destined imagine the healing and evangelists that should rise from their obedience you don't obey God there are many people who will go down the grave that should not be the will of God prophetic psalmists imagine the songs of worship that the body of Christ is still waiting for that should come from your believing God I'm not talking of special numbers I'm talking of songs like ladders in the spirit that can help men rise how about kingdom financiers? There are some of you here, you've been saying it forever. One day I'll have resources. And you are not committing God. You are not doing the things that will make God to manifest on that wise. You are not diligent. You are not learning the laws that bring empowerment. You've not taken time to study God's prophetic program. It doesn't work that way. The Lord put this conference, ladies and gentlemen, so that we will be determined now you know your assignment is to go back and find the truths lord what have you said concerning my life what have you said concerning this vision i challenge you yesterday write the things that are not working in your life and let that be your project for the remaining part of this year make up your mind and say no excuses fail honorably but don't keep quiet do not be at ease in the midst of trouble do not be at ease in the midst of darkness believers don't operate that way even if you are in ignorance keep crawling your way forward hallelujah I made up my mind that everything God has in store for me that in my lifetime I will walk in it when I walk with God I don't factor Satan in the equation I I walk with God as if the devil does not exist Lord what are you saying because his empowerment is based on my disobedience and if I obey God he knows what to do with Satan do you believe this? Yes. 
when the Lord spoke to me and said there is no nation you go to that will reject you I believed him it was up to me to believe him or to argue and say okay no problem oh God well I'm sure you walk out away no 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 I made up my mind as a man of God I said there has to be a way of doing ministry with integrity without manipulating people and doing all kind and playing games there has to be a way out of this thing are we together and I said Lord rather than arguing show me the way and the Lord told me there is a price to pay for authentic ministry it's not a gift it's a reward and I said Lord all I need is the grace to pay that price and by his privilege we are still paying that price and look what God is able to do ladies and gentlemen let me challenge you again there is nothing God cannot do shake away unbelief because we're about to pray shake away unbelief Lagos is too blessed for you to be crying every day please do not feel bad that I'm challenging you you keep giving there are people giving all kinds of excuses someone must challenge you to let you know that for as long as you keep giving these excuses you will keep justifying pain and mediocrity and failure the life we've been called into is a life of victory Every land has good. Obedience is what fishes out your portion to give you. When they said, Master, we have toiled all night, there was still fish in the river. The fish just did not come to their boats. God knows what it is to tell the fish that will bring it from anywhere to anywhere, from anywhere to anywhere. Apostle Mayon is that there are bills on my head right now. I am in debt in a way that if God does not help me, I might plunge into depression. There is a way out. Go and study how God brought people out of financial situations in scripture. Every time people were in financial situations, it's not business that brought them out. It was the prophetic that brought them out. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. He said, where fell it? By this time tomorrow, the prophet prophesied restoration. Restoration is in the office of the prophetic, not businessmen. He can use that business, go and borrow vessels, and then sell it. He, but let it be at the instance of the prophetic word. Apostle, I've been looking for my land in Lagos and it's not there. It's not true. Your eyes have not seen it, but it is there. There is a portion for you. The Bible says the increase of the earth is for all and that even the king is fed by that which comes from the field. When it has to do with land and his blessings, there is no discrimination. The increase of the field is for all. The increase of the field is for all. Man of God, your membership are everywhere. Jesus said, all that you have given me, God gives men, men. is the one who gives. I have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition and that that scripture will be fulfilled. There is a place for you in destiny. There is an audience that have been designed to hear you and to honor God in your life. Yours is to believe God alone and with childlike faith that he continues to transit you. You are not the first to, to desire visibility. There are men who came out from their lowly estate without human manipulations. I can tell you, the man standing in front of you is a testament that when God places something upon your life, there is nothing that can quench your darkness. My life will soon reveal You're the lifter of men The lifter of men Lord, I will hold on through the storm. I will hold on to your word. My life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men, the lifter of men. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to pray. I don't know what you have heard God say to you today, but I want you to make up your mind that from today, my life must change. My life must change financially. My life must change ministerially. My life must change. There has to be an unction from heaven. Go ahead and begin to pray. 
please make sure you participate in this prayer session we have about five minutes of intense prayer it's a word and prayer conference begin to thank the lord for what you have heard begin to thank the lord for what you have heard begin to thank the lord for what you have heard the entrance of his word gives light and understanding unto the simple are you praying go ahead and pray hallelujah praise the name of the lord you are going to cry unto the lord this mountain where i have dwelt i have stayed there too long i have stayed there too long i'm ready to move to the next level open your mouth and cry please cry this mountain where i have dwelt is to have stayed there too long please open your mouth and pray let it be from the depth of your heart thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her someone is praying spiritually i have dwelt here too long this level of my spiritual life this level financially this level in my career let your light come and drive away every darkness pray for yourself pray for your children pray for your ministry someone who is angry at the dominion and the deception of darkness go ahead and begin to pray the light shineth in the darkness 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 someone pray it's time for the nations to hear your voice it's time for kings to acknowledge the hand of god upon your life is someone praying yes sir yes sir go ahead and pray it's time for the grace is placed upon your life to speak and to speak so evidently that the days of frustration come to an end engaging light for your victory engaging light for your triumph engaging light Father, I am ascending, ascending heights in the spirit, ascending dimensions in destiny. The days of living in fear must come to an end. The days of living in uncertainty must come to an end. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Of love, of power, and of a sound mind.
pray pray in the name of Jesus pray in the name of Jesus pray hallelujah hallelujah say after me in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that my portion my prophetic portion in life and destiny I declare that it comes to me open your mouth and pray your portion as far as God's program is concerned your portion as far as increase is concerned your portion as far as God's prophetic program is concerned in the name of Jesus Christ for your church to experience the mighty and marvelous hand of God. Pray. I'm in business with God. No death. No tragedy. No up and down. For the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Hallelujah. 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 Now out of the many kingdom principles that are available, I want us to engage just one in prayer. The Bible says that no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Number two, that every tongue that rises up against you, you will condemn. It didn't say him, you. You will use your mouth to condemn. Therefore, in the next two minutes, I want you to open your mouth and dethrone anything that has taken the place of God, threatening your life, threatening your liberty. Please open your mouth and declare. Sheba kaparaka tabraska tabelegatos. Who are thou mounting before Zerubbabel? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt be made plain at the shout of grace, grace. Pray. The spirit of delay, I come against you in the name of Jesus. Retrogression, I come against you in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. The powers that keep men down in Lagos, that keep men down in this region, I curse you by the God of heaven. The spirit that covers the glory of men, that they do not rise and shine. The Lord rebuke you. Go ahead and pray. Ah, pray, pray. It will give way, I assure you. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome, you overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome, you overcome. Every high thing must come down every strong goes must be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome every mountain must come down every strong goes must be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome hallelujah in the name of Jesus, I feel stirred in my heart to give us one more prayer point. Hallelujah. Please hear me. There are some of you right now, you need the ministry of men like never before. John chapter 5, the tragedy of the man at Bethesda is that I have no man. 
you are in Lagos but you are alone you are in business but you are alone you need help but you are alone please if you have not prayed here pray seriously now you are going to open your mouth and declare Lord who have you a portion in this season to hold my hand and help me up I call them forth I call them forth I call them forth go ahead and pray it takes God in partnership with men someone be serious pray I call for help us help us sent by God help us sent by God endorse us sent by God lift us sent by God professionals sent by God must be someone sent by God to help you to be used by God to wipe away your tears don't keep quiet in August not September not September this August I decree and declare I call upon heaven may they show up may they show up may they show up not September not October not November not December I call upon heaven arise oh God in the name of Jesus help us help us help us Help us. Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped of God. 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 Jesus mighty name we have prayed in Jesus mighty name we have prayed we're wrapping up in Acts chapter 12 the Bible says Herod stretched his hand to vex certain Jews and the Bible says they held a guy called James and they beheaded James and the believers kept quiet the angels that came to save Peter were there but because there was no demand from earth to heaven they were watching as they beheaded James and the Bible says keep that scripture Acts chapter 12 the Bible says they beheaded James the brother of John with the sword read verse 3 the Bible says verse 3 give it to us media and because he saw that it pleased the Jews and the church kept quiet he proceeded further this is what evil does when you keep quiet it will first attack your health and you keep quiet it proceeds further satan always starts at a point but he does not desire to remain there no he starts with your firstborn and you say no it's just teenagers behaving he proceeds further anytime you keep quiet he proceeds further and then the bible says verse five now let's jump to verse five it says peter was kept in prison but this time around the church said will not keep quiet again he said but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him if they started that prayer when they held James he would not have died 
there are many things we are saying is the will of God and God is saying I have no hand in it it is your refusal to pray and your refusal to comply can I give you one more prayer request Lord anything every tragedy that has come to my life as a result of ignorance or evil I command a sevenfold restoration a sevenfold restoration go ahead and pray Oh, I thought it was you walking. Now I see that it is the devil walking. And Lord, I demand by faith a sevenfold restoration. Restoration of my job. For losing my loved ones to ignorance. Lord, restore. Lord, restore. For losing my finances. Losing my business. Lord, restore. Restore, restore, oh God, until my life becomes consistent with your will. Declare restoration. The years that the canker worm has eaten. The years the palmer worm has eaten, the years the caterpillar has eaten, Lord restore, restore my joy, restore my fire, restore my spiritual life, restore the influence, the name you have given my family, Lord restore, restore, restore that mantle that you once placed upon my life, that left through carelessness, restore my spiritual life, Restore the gift of the spirit that was once at work in my life. For in Jesus mighty name we are praying. In Jesus mighty name we are praying. Hallelujah. We have a final session this evening. And if I were some of you, except it is necessary, if you stay far, just find somewhere to camp around and be flogging it with destiny before evening. You get a meal, just something to refresh yourself and refuse and say, Lord, tonight I am making it my night, not our night. Tonight is my night that you place a demand. The Bible says there remaineth a rest for the people of God. Hallelujah. Tonight we're going to have time. I'll just show you one key and then we'll be praying. I'll minister to the sick and we'll be ministering the power of God. Age-long captivities that have tied family members, that have tied people, or except, except it is not of the devil, but provided it is of the devil, it must bow finally in the name of Jesus Christ. And for some of you, you may need to Call your loved ones, especially those who are within reach, those who might be outside of the nation, tell them to connect. We know what we are going through, tell them and say God has brought a solution. They should connect. The media can give the links of the church, the, you know, the platforms and listen carefully and be prepared to receive and come with your prayer request. Don't say I've been writing prayer requests. Has it been answered? If no, write it again and come with faith. Tonight, among the many things that will be happening is that God is going to be imparting graces. For some of you, these graces that were once working in your life that you lost as a result of prayerlessness or carelessness or wrong friends or wrong ministerial patterns, God is going to be restoring authentic, genuine graces. Hallelujah. You have a loved one in the hospital, come with their photos by, uh, as a point of contact. You are trusting God, maybe some document, if it's within your power and you can reach, come with it. And let something rest upon it for God's sake. That you will return back and you will know that there is a God that sits in heaven. Hallelujah. And as you come tonight, I'd like you to see in the mind of your spirit every luggage that has refused you from moving fast that God is going to be losing that chain and it will fall off here tonight are we in agreement on this so before the service even starts 
you should be seated and already praying in the spirit lord visit me if you're a man of god father it's time for my ministry to encounter genuine grace to rise you are a business person that spirit that has surrounded my business that will not give me visibility it must give way today hallelujah as for now may the lord bless you may the lord honor you as you begin to press for knowledge as you begin to press to know the conditions connected to actualizing divine promises and as you obtain grace to walk in faith and obedience may you begin to see the wonders of god in your life for in jesus mighty and matchless name we have prayed